Hi there. Hi there. Welcome to Gardening 2022, episode 23. Hi. We have lots to do today, don't we, Jane? Yeah. We're going to plant some snow peas in the bed we prepared two weeks ago. That'll be fun, right? Yeah. And we got to harvest some tomatoes. I think I'm going to plant a couple potatoes as experiments. I've never done fall potatoes. I got some specialized potato growing bags. They are not the cool potato tubs I saw on the gardening channel from England that you can't get in America, but they are grow bags. And the thing about grow bags is they are, they drain more. So I think that will solve my soil problem. So we are gonna plant a couple of those and put a couple in ground as well. Um, but I forgot to chip the potatoes. So that might be tomorrow or maybe even next week, but it's getting late. I don't know. We're gonna sort that out. Uh, we're gonna check in on the corn. We're gonna harvest a bunch of peppers. Jane likes harvesting peppers, don't you? Yeah. And beans, green beans. You like harvesting green beans, right? Yep. And lettuce, the lettuce is doing well. And then just generally check in on everything else. Where did Jane go? I'm here. There she is! <laughs> Jane and I found this cucumber when we were planting the snow peas. It was just <laughs> sitting there. Looks good though. We will keep it. All right, well, I didn't think it was that hot yet today, but apparently it was. And that phone overheated. So I don't know how much of that you got. Um, this is done. Two types of snow peas, one by Burpee Organics, one by Kitazawa, which is an Asian seed company here in North Carolina. I have a bunch in the middle that I could do I was gonna do some baby bok choy for my mother-in-law, but I'm out of seeds. So I will do that in a couple days. Um, I just looked at my garden calendar and a lot of stuff for winter is in September. Second batch of lettuce, spinach, all that. So something will go there in a week or two. Uh, and then this row cover protectant will come off once they're big enough to start trellising. But I've had some problems with squirrels and people eating small snow pea plants. Um, I've had a lot of problems with snow bees and squirrels in general, so I don't know what we're going to do in the long term. Maybe something like the corn here, which is doing great. Look at that. And the radishes next to it are uh, getting almost ready to harvest. I can't actually get in there, so I don't know what I'm going to do about that. Lol. The onions are starting to grow. You can't really see, but there are there are some onion sprouts in here. So that is good. And so are, let's see if I can get in there. And so are the beets, if you can see that right there. So I might actually get some beets for Thanksgiving dinner. Jane has left me. I think we're gonna harvest some peppers. There's a ton of peppers here. Hopefully this phone doesn't overheat. I'll keep it in the shade. Um, yeah, let's do peppers. Good haul, a bunch of shishitos, a bunch of banana, some Johnny's Red Flame, and a bunch of jalapeno. Most of those are going to the neighbors in exchange for swimming in their pool today. All right, the old beans were looking kind of sad, so I refreshed that side of the bed when I planted the new beans, but this side hasn't gotten any fertilizer since April. So I did a fertilizer spray on it, some Neptune's Harvest, tomato and veg, uh, and then they still had the white aphids all over them, so I did some neem oil on them as well. 
And then I did the Neptunes Harvest in the pepper bed as well because it has not had any fertilizer since April as well. And you can see this bed is sunk a good six or seven inches there. At this time of year, normally, I think to myself, I'll just take the hoops I'm netting off the peppers. It's fine. Nobody will eat them. And then they immediately get eaten by the deer. So even though they are growing out of the netting, I think that's the right thing to do is to leave it. Lufa is doing lovely. Second summer here. It's all very hot and in the 80s again. High 80s. But I don't have any actual plants on this. It's all leaves. All hat, no cattle. Um... Maybe I've got, maybe it's too dense. Maybe they're hidden in there. I don't know, I just want one loofah. That's all I want, one loofah in life. But it is growing nicely and I think I'll get at least another month or two of growth out of it. So there's still a chance we will get a loofah. Basil, doing lovely. Eat it all day, every day. Keeps growing. I'm just not even bothering cutting the fires this year because it's keeping the bees happy. My theory about getting another 100 cherry tomatoes off this plant is basically nil because somebody is eating them all. But I am getting some. Enough for Jane to be happy. She eats a cherry tomato at lunch every day. This is the broccoli and cauliflower I planted two weeks ago. It did not see it at all. I don't know why. Uh, it was under the dome and I think it got too hot. When I planted it, it was in the 70s and I was worried it was too cold. Now it's in the 80s and 90s. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replant this and try again with the dome not on it. Maybe that'll work. I don't know, man. Like I said, I've never done seedlings outside before, so I don't know if this is going to work. I don't know if there's something wrong with the soil, which is just cocoa corn and perlite and a little bit of blood meal for food, which is what I used on all this stuff out here, and this all worked. So I don't know. I'm thinking it was the dome or the heat, so I'm going to do it dome-free. Um, I don't know where to put them that they don't get eaten. I guess inside the hoop house. Let's do that. All right, seedlings. Second try. Good luck this week. Well, I would hardly call that the most successful tomato harvest ever, but it's not nothing. It'll get me through the week. I'm thinking I really should have planted new tomatoes in like late July, early August. There are some of these that have just sprouted in the ground. We're gonna actually see what happens with those because maybe we can get some more off of those. And we still have some good tomatoes coming. Here, here, a bunch of Romas um, down there. But, you know, pretty bleak. I have made some plans for next year. Oop, I'm going to raise this hoop house about three feet, two feet on T poles so that'll give me a higher height. And uh, yeah, that's my rough plan. Still working out the details. There's the fennel. It is coming along lovely. Ginger is also doing great. Another lovely bloom on the rose bush. Parsley and jasmine and stevia are all coming back from their cutback last week. The sage is as well right there. So I think we will be in good shape for Thanksgiving. Pear trees and apple trees, all doing well. I think they can hold out, except for that one. Hopefully, I'm hoping its roots are okay. It's crazy how many weeds are in just that one. This one is doing well. This is an apple surrounded by two grapes that I'm gonna need to get out of here soon. I might do that tomorrow. I'm still thinking it through. Great blueberry needs to be planted. Sad apple, but doing well enough. And then the other grape, which needs to be moved. Lettuce and arugula is doing awesome. Carrots are about ready to be thinned. All that celery has yielded me one celery stalk, which is pathetic. Yeah, I should thin these. We'll do that after lunch, along with new potatoes. In addition to last week's watermelon, 
I saw another one in here somewhere. So we have, there it is. So we have at least two. It's very exciting. There's a third little one sprouting. And some more there. And one there. So we might get more. Maybe cherry tomato way up there I'll never get to. That was the mailman. He's bringing me a birdie's bed, which I'm not gonna do till next week. I still can't tell what's weeds. Oh, I think that's just weeds. And what's plants, but the variety in here, in these two beds, leads me to believe that I'm slowly making progress on these two beds as a butterfly bed. So hopefully in the next month or so, we'll see something. All right, it's the next day. I cut these seed potatoes. They're not seed potatoes, but they are seed potatoes. They're the potatoes I have grew from the last batch of seed potatoes. I cut them yesterday, so they get a little bit of dried out surface on the edges. I Google it, and you're supposed to let them last two or three days to develop a hard leathery surface. But they say you can plant them. It just increases the chance of disease or something. But um, I don't want to wait two or three days. And I figure they all have an equal chance. What I'm doing here is I'm doing an experiment where I'm going to do two plantings and grow bags and one in the dirt for the fall to see which works better for next year because buckets, five gallon buckets aren't cutting it. So we have these new 10 gallon grow bags. I already had 10 gallon grow bags, but these have this stupid little compartment here where you can check in on your potatoes. I thought that compartment was gonna have like screen or clear plastic or something, but it's just a hole. I could have made this out of my other 10 gallon grow bags, but whatever, we got these. So we're gonna do two of these and one in the dirt. So let's get the wheelbarrow, go to the dirt pile and grab myself uh, 20 gallons of dirt or so. The thinking here is that's the highest spot. So we are doubling up the rocks. I still had drainage issues even with these rocks here. So I'm doubling up, double high. That's where the grow bags will go. That spot over there was higher as well. This in the middle here is the drainage channel that goes out to the yard into the pond. That's where I'm gonna plant the one potato in ground as well. So I was prepping the two areas. Now we gotta prep the soil with amendments and a lot cocoa core to get it fluffy enough that it'll feel okay. With the last batch, the soil didn't have a ton of cocoa core, but it worked pretty well for the ones that drained okay. Some of them were still really wet and muddy and, you know, out of these buckets here. But those in the larger bins, one of them that had good drainage and was big, the soil dried out. So I don't think I need to add tons and tons of cocoa core. I think the soil will be okay if I have good drainage, grow bags have better drainage, higher rocks, better drainage, we should be good. That is our experiment on this stuff for the fall. So now we need to make some cocoa core, which is tedious and drives me crazy, but it needs to be done. So, everything was very, everything is very damp. We had a big rain last night. 
the soil and for my dirt piles very damp and these are very damp so tastes like drainage good mix of vermiculite perlite and coca core in each one of these i forgot after i got my dirt that i only want to fill them a third or halfway so i have a bunch of dirt left but we're gonna let those go we'll add irrigation in a day or two after they've got a chance to dry out now we're gonna plant the last three seeds right there to see if they grow in the dirt here All right, here we go. I added perlite and worm castings just to give the soil a little bit more drainage and some food to kick it off, but I didn't want to put too much because they're going to need to acclimate to the native soil, which is pretty rich, as we know, because the tomatoes did really well. Then I covered it in mulch and I added a drip emitter. I went ahead and added drip emitters to those two as well because I'm not going to come back out for a week and it's not gonna rain for 10 days. So may as well, it'll still drain. It'll still dry out, I'm not worried. I thinned these carrots, I thought I filmed it. I did not, I really get stressed. Thinning carrots, I feel like I'm picking winners and losers. I don't like it. And then they all get all floppy, but they should perk back up. I've done it enough to know that even though I feel like I'm killing them, it is for the greater good. It's like Grindelwald, right? Uh, and then I did a bunch of weeding in these. A lot of crabgrass getting into things. I need more mulch. The landscapers are coming to do that mulch in a couple weeks. I might have them put some in here or leave me a pile to do it. Uh, this is getting really muddy right here though, so I'm gonna go get some pine needles to just fix that up real quick. Okay, last thing for the week. I found the baby bok choy seeds and I want to plant a few more cucumber seeds, just two or three, to see if I can succession plant this late. So next year I have a little bit more information about how late I can plant my last cucumbers because I should have been succession planting them. So I'm going to just plant those in the part of the bed in the middle here, three cucumbers on the edge and six or seven baby bok choy for my mother-in-law in the middle. And that is it for this week. Tune in next week, see if the seedlings worked, see if the new tomatoes are working, and uh, who knows what else? Maybe the corn, maybe the corn, maybe the peas will have sprouted. We don't know. Thank you for watching. Hope your August was lovely. Have a lovely Labor Day weekend.